So electric fencing, the, um, the mindset is slightly different to stock fencing. With a conventional stock fence, it's the physical strength of the fence which makes it a strong fence. With electric fencing, it's the voltage and the consistency of wire height that makes for a strong fence. Because electric fencing is a psychological barrier for the animals. So they know that they mustn't touch it, providing the wires are at, uh, at the right height and there's enough voltage, then they won't touch it. So, key for providing good voltage is the energizer and the earthing system. So the energizer we have here is a unit which can run off the mains or the battery, or we could even put a solar panel with the battery to provide a longer lasting system that we don't have to keep charging up. So for energizers, there's a variety of options. It's important to do some research. The power output of the energizer is measured in joules. Okay, joules of stored energy. And the measure of joules, basically the higher the measure, the, the more wires, the longer length of fence, the, that energizer will power. Now, more powerful energizers don't actually give you more voltage on the fence, but what they do mean is that the more fences you connect to them, they're able to maintain that voltage, and perhaps more importantly, any sort of loading on the fence, such as vegetation, particularly in sheep systems where the, the grass may grow up and start to contact the bottom wire, an energizer with a higher dual output is gonna maintain the voltage, and that's really important. So once you've installed your energizer, and as you start to take power around the farm, particularly with a, with a mains unit or with a larger solar energizer, it's also gonna become useful to be able to isolate individual fence lines or fields um, so that you can perhaps turn them off when there's no stock in them to conserve power, or so that you can fault find or even simply for access or maintenance work. So there's also a variety of different styles of switches available, each with their own, own benefits. Um, the only downside with the switch is that sometimes you turn the fence off as you go in the field and maybe you move the animals, you then leave the field and forget to turn the fence back on again. And um, that becomes quite frustrating, especially when the animals then start to test the fence and possibly escape by the morning. So there's a variety of options available. You can use something like a remote control so by putting this on the fence line, I can turn the energizer off from pretty much anywhere in the, in the system. So that's really useful. It means that the fence can stay on for most of the time and I can turn it off when I need to, maintenance work or maybe to move the fence and then turn it back on straight away so I don't forget. <laughs>